Now, we are here also because we need to look for the best ways of implementing the National Development Plan, the New Growth Path, Infrastructure Development Plan, amongst a whole host of plans that we all have, that we all know about. And within the small and medium enterprises, believe me, the opportunities are huge. The opportunities are available. The challenge I've seen since I've been here is that people do not get the information. They just don't know where exactly to go to. And even if they go to those places, the turnaround of the information and the assistance that they need to get, it takes forever. I'm experiencing, experiencing is the first time that I'm, I'm being a minister, I'm experiencing the frustration of people where they tell you we would like to have this and this and that. Six months down the line, I'm still dancing almost on the same space. And so I'm saying to the staff in my office, the people that I work with, I cannot work in an environment like this. If I come and I say I was in Limpopo, these are the issues that were, 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 were raised by Limpopo. I want a month, two months, three months to know what have we done about it. Because I can't keep on going back to them and saying one and the same thing. But I think that yourselves who are here, you need to look for those opportunities that are being presented by government. And I think that from a department of small and medium enterprise, I know that our website is nothing to write home about at the moment. But of course, it was difficult for us to have some fancy website where then people access and then they cannot be assisted. Now that we do have a budget, now that we do also have a better understanding of opportunities that even exist within the private sector, I think that in this new financial year, we'll be in a better space to assist people that have been knocking on our doors. But in conclusion, I would like to say to you, um, from a small business development point of view, I've crisscrossed the country. I've interacted with many, many South Africans. I feel South Africans are working. I feel that uh, many who do not even have any access to government, they are doing their best to get their businesses operating and they are moving. They are not waiting for somebody to come and help them. The meetings that have attended, conferences and workshops, have given me a, a confidence uh, to even push harder because I've realized that what was being said in the beginning, some saying certain things, I think that the majority of South Africans are up and about and they are making a living for themselves. All they are asking for is for government to deliver on what government is promising to deliver. All they are asking is that we must have an ear to listen to them, but not only have an ear to listen to them, but also come back with plans of how we are going to address uh, the challenges that we have. The department uh, has now got its, its strategic plan for the next five years. It's also got its year plan starting with uh, 2015, 2016. We've already concluded with our plans. However, we are still saying that some of our plans will need to be redone and repolished as we move on because ultimately the aim is to upscale our support that we give to small and medium enterprises. I like telling this story because this story is a true story. I had a grandmother that had to educate eight children, grandmother and grandfather. My grandfather, uh, when we came back in 1994, we had to fetch him from Denver Hostel where he had spent more than 40 years of his life living in Denver Hostel. He was a very tall, uh, a proud um, Zulu man. And when I saw the first time where he had been sleeping on the bunker that was not long enough to carry the whole uh, tall body, I, I, I cried because I was looking at this and thinking, is this where my grandfather has been living all his life in Johannesburg? Fortunately, he had something to show for that. He had us and the fact that he had tried to give us all an education to, to be with my grandmother. I say, my grandmother didn't have an APSA to go to. He didn't have a standard, she didn't have a standard bank to go to. She didn't have a Capitec to go to. She didn't have no bank to go to. Worst of all, she didn't have a government to go to, to go and ask for this incentive. And they, I'm sitting down now with young people and they're all asking me, what incentive can you give us, you know? And I'm like, yeah, I will give you the incentive, but one thing that is now a, a teaching me, that taught me without knowing that one day I will find myself in this space, was the fact that my grandmother labored 
traveling from Swaziland to Johannesburg to Small Street. I didn't even know what Small Street looked like, but I knew what is Small Street because she used to come here and buy stuff and go and sell. Then later on, she decided, no, I don't want to be going there back and forth. Let me buy myself a machine. Let me sew something. And she got a niche for herself what to sell in order. And I can't imagine the kilometers that my grandmother walked because while we were going to school, the school fees that she has to pay for us, the whole day we are in school. She would be sewing the whole night. The following morning, she would be walking from house to house collecting uh, 10 rents, 20 rents from the people who owed her that she has sold. I know, as a matter of fact, there is a story of thousands of grandmothers, one way or the other, whether they were in the rural area or whether they are in the township, whether they are wherever. This story that I'm telling is a life story of my grandmother who made it possible for me to be standing here and be speaking this nice English that I speak uh, and, and being just who I am. That's the woman who made it possible for me. And she didn't have all the things that our government is trying to give to our people to uplift us. And lastly, the other thing that I'd like to say is that, you know, the apartheid regime had a focus only on its people. It empowered its people. And I will say this again. While it empowered its own people, and their people were riding on the backs of black people in the farms and everywhere, in the shops and all, you cannot take away one thing. <laughs> they worked. They woke up in the morning and made sure that their businesses survive. They made sure that their businesses don't collapse. And of course they had an advantage. There was apartheid where many of us were shut out. But you can't. I'm sure those of us who are older, as my age, will remember how uh, we used to laugh at them wearing the farmers wearing their khaki shorts and the socks that reach here. Uh, and, and we used to say, Banenta Mose Galkun. You know why, Besishon Jalo? Because the sun used to bend them a lot. And then their necks used to look like a Hini Galkun in English, a turkey, you know. So all I'm saying is that I know many people are saying, no. But you can't say things like those. I will say it because that's the truth. The sooner we also wake up to the reality of the fact that we've got a government that is out here giving us the opportunity uh, to improve ourselves and be better people, you cannot do it without working smart, without working hard, without sacrificing, without ensuring that there are certain things you won't have. Because if you begin to have these things, your business is going to collapse. That's what we need to do, I believe, as black people. When we talk about black econ economic empowerment, when we talk about black industrialists, it means we're talking about black industrialists, people who will understand that when they produce a lotion, where does it start? Are you going to be jumping on the bandwagon of those that have already? You must have the knowledge. What do you mix to have baby lotion? What is the content of this box that you have? What is the production line of this whole thing? Now we must move away from being abused and used by people who want to front us. We want to know how it is done from the beginning to the end so that we then can become the black industrialists that the president is talking about. Thank you.